out and be like, but don't talk at all That's really not the truth, I just don't fuck with y'all I'm only with a few and yeah, my circle small Or either by my Danny Ruger in my drawers Ain't trying to be no tough guy, it's just how I'm raised The softest niggas gangsta in the mid-state My grandma said you lose, you better fight again At the age of 30 Y'all know what it is now. Oh, it's the most infamous podcast in the game right now. We didn't come here to play with y'all. We not playing with y'all. We got Facebook Live right now. And we also, we, we doing this YouTube style. You know how we do. Um, Yo, this is Convo with a Boss, man. It's your boy, B-Cutty. And you know I got the beautiful, the most intelligent, the most knowing all. I got Toy the ATL vegan. What's going on, Toy? What up? Glad to be back. Yo, 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 yo. Let's get into it, man. Let's get into it, man. Um, yep. Yo, we gotta start off. We got we got the, we got the energy going right quick. This is season two. This is season two. That's right. That's right. Season two. We getting it in tonight. Um, we got a good show for y'all tonight. We got a jam packed show for y'all tonight. We're gonna talk sports. We're gonna talk some junk. Um but first, I got to address something. I got to address one thing. This is just my point of view. This is just my thoughts. So I'm going to aim it at, I'm gonna aim it at uh, Facebook, and I'm also aiming at y'all. So, so let's rock with it. I want to address some things real quick, get some stuff off my chest. There has been a, a lot of love and support for your boy, for your girl, for this podcast, for the businesses and things that I've been doing. And I, shout out to that. Shout out to that. But it's been a lot of hate. Take that back. It's been a lot of hate from certain individuals. <laughs> so we're going to do it like this. My name is still my name. Right. That's all y'all need to know. My name is my name. My right. word has always been my word. And my balls right. is definitely going to always be my balls. Absolutely. Your hate will not stop us. Your hate won't stop me, definitely. Mm-hmm. And if you have a problem with it, Quit creating stories and come to the originator. If you want, I can bring you on the podcast. We could talk about issues that y'all might have. Facts, but, facts, facts. but we will not do slander lies. We don't no. do that. No. So I wanted to address that. Now, the people that, that is aimed at, they, they know exactly who they is. Mm-hmm. I ain't got to go no further than that. I ain't giving y'all okay. no fame. I ain't going to put your name out there. You got to pay for that. So um toy how you been how you been toy i've been good uh life is good um life is constantly evolving and you got to roll with it and that's one thing that i've learned and uh you know we just we just have to be better i do have something heavy on my heart tonight that i want to say i want to say um here in georgia it's all over the news so i know you know about it um in Appalachia high school here in georgia it's in winder county barrow county Winder, Georgia, I'm sorry, Barrow County. Um, 14-year-old killed two students, two teachers today, and wounded nine others. So wow. I just want to say condolences to the, the kids' parents and the two teachers that passed, then perished. And I also, my, my, my prayers go out to the, to the kid, the 14-year-old kid, because uh, this is a, an epidemic that we're dealing with here, and uh, well, really worldwide. And we just have to do something because we send our kids to school to be educated. And a lot of those kids seeing um, their their peers and their teachers just laying there today. And um, wow. the school closed for the rest of the week because they're 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 having grief counselors, you know, talk to the kids. And, you know, it's just something close to my heart because I, I just feel like we should be doing more, you know, to prevent this kind of um I, I don't, to be honest, Cuddy, I, I really want to call it something, but we have to call it, it's, it's an, it's, it's an epidemic. It's nothing yeah. like we'll forget about it. I don't want to, I don't want to seem heartless, but if it's, if it doesn't happen, it's almost like it's out of sight, out of mind, and it just keeps happening. And so we got to do something about it. Um, school shootings of any type of portion is is always tragic because they they train for these in different um counties and different states and there, but it's nothing you really can do because you're not expecting it when it actually happens. Um, 
and then uh it's very 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 tragic every time it happened because you're talking about kids that's innocent yeah. getting caught in this um that has nothing to do with anything um so we definitely send our, our prayers and our thoughts uh to those families that was affected yeah. uh that that lost loved ones and even the ones that was there that might be traumatized and going through some type of trauma we send our prayers out to y'all for sure yeah. um man um it's so much so much has happened since the last uh show that we done together um man, where do we start so we started the positive the positive um let me see if i can pull up the picture real quick let me see, hey. get my picture bag real quick because you know we try to bring a lot of pictures um oh yep got one right here so i i actually was invited on the radio station in saginaw michigan my hometown yeah. uh kiss 1071 with joyce harvin um hey. and it it was it was an experience i liked it um it was a different audience than than what we usually do um uh-huh. so getting awareness out uh shout out to her now the one thing i do want to say is we was doing a live and i was probably on there for maybe a good eight minutes uh-huh. and in those eight minutes there was over a thousand people checking in now i ain't saying we was the reason they was checking in but i'm <laughs> saying they don't get a thousand views if it ain't me on there so i'm just right. saying right, right shout right. out to man the boss nation man shout out to everybody man combo with a boss um that 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 tuned in and, and downloaded the uh the kiss 107 app and people that went online um on facebook and checked that out man um definitely definitely was dope uh, it was a great interview. You're to... so articulate, and I was proud. I, I was very I'm just, proud. Of I'm you. trying. I'm, <laughs> I, you know, I'm gonna be honest, and since this is our show, I'm gonna be honest. The, my biggest fear was me saying the word motherfucker. I promise you, that was my biggest fear. Like I was scared I was gonna say that, and it was gonna slip out in a way, like because I was gonna get too comfortable, and then I've been like, yeah, and then, you know, motherfucker, and then I'll be like, oh, <laughs> oh this is crazy, because it was on a Sunday, and a lot of that. Um, that that show program on that day is either um church or religion based or right. uh right. political something like that so you know it was different for me but um i i shout out to uh joyce harvin again and kiss 107 for having us on there and yep. um she also wants to come on our show she wants to meet you i said okay. that so we're gonna definitely get on there because i want to talk about um black people in media and also females in media um mm-hmm. some of the things and the obstacles that they go through so um man we that that was a that was that was a big for us um oh yeah. gotta say some the merch yo you see it that's right that's right convo with the ball shirts we doing it um the site will be live it will be live in two weeks uh you can go okay. to convo with a boss.com and get your t-shirts we got hoodies on there uh we got backpacks on there um it's so much so much stuff we're trying to get uh also got some sliders uh from to come out um with the combo with the boss logo on it y'all be able to get that on there um and, and just check out and actually when you go on the website it's going to actually premiere the first episode so we might start flipping off of youtube and start just going straight through us so you're gonna have to kick hey. over there and take all of our our t- uh twenty six thousand followers over to you know saying combo with the boss.com and Yo, YouTube gonna have to cut that check. That's all I'm saying. They're gonna have to <laughs> definitely cut that check for us. We are not playing games. Um, yo, Don't play with yo. Us. What, what, where should we start tonight? Where should we start tonight? First, let's do this. We're gonna tell you what tonight's show is. Tonight's show is gonna be very much inspired by a couple interviews by uh, a couple superstars that are not ready for marriage. So, uh, Cam Newton did an interview and uh nick cannon did an interview and in their interviews they talked about you know they like having kids but they're not ready for marriage so i was thinking like well why are men some some men you know scared of commitment so tonight's show will be about that but first though we got to talk about some let's talk about the olympics let's get to it the olympics olympics was i think it was pretty good i think it was pretty good for america we we did we did our thing um we could start with the nba the NBA players going out there and they did their thing. They held it down. I was nervous though. I thought France so, was gonna get us. So let me let me just say this. As each game, the team progressed, and then you could see the leadership 
and LeBron, right? You could see right. everybody looking towards him. But that last game when Steph caught fire, I was in a sports bar, Teddy, when I tell you we clowned in there because he is the purest, the greatest. I, like the way he just fades and then he, mm, you know, just thinking about it, Steph no. Curry. Like, you know, I'm not a fan because he would go to state. I am. No, 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 no. I'll say this. I'll say this. I'll say this. I am a fan of his craft. I'm not a Steph Curry fan, right? I love him. It's very hard for me to be all everything ATL and then, you know, be on Steph. But I'm, I'm on LeBron like that, so it, it's kind of okay. But um, he's just one of the purest, if not the purest shooter that, like I thought Ray Allen had it going on, right? Right. But Steph is just something different. Like, he, he if it weren't for Steph, we wouldn't be here talking about it. So, so my now thing with Steph Steph is watching Steph is definitely poetic. A lot of times, a lot of people say it's like watching an yeah. artist paint um, because right. he moves without the ball, but it's like he on skates. Um, the Cavaliers, um, all the teams that went against Golden State in their prime know how hard it is to guard Steph Curry. Let alone yeah. with like a Clay or somebody or even a Draymond um, setting picks and then getting open for the pop shots, because you still have to focus on Steph without the ball, which is the scariest part. Um, he definitely was kicking it, but I, the MVP of the Olympics was LeBron. And LeBron, if you mm -hmm. look at the numbers, LeBron was doing everything needed. Now, now a lot of people are saying unsung hero of the Olympics uh, basketball team was. Uh, Devin Booker because he was out there doing a lot of things that you don't really like you will see like Draymond doing like that right, stuff right, that's right, not right, going right. to hit the spreadsheet right right and um, it just seemed like everybody knew the goal nobody was on some ego stuff and they went out and they got it done um, so well, salute to the, the, the NBA players uh, that went out there let's face it there will not be another Olympic team with LeBron Steph Curry um, KD well no Devin Booker, th there Definitely will never not. be another Olympic team like that. No. So you got you got some of the greatest players playing in their last. I mean, LeBron said it, and Steph definitely said it. And um, we, we got to touch on this bromance, though, with KD and uh, Anthony Edwards. Like, everywhere KD went, Anthony Edwards it was his shadow. So, so for me. But it, did you feel little brother, big brother vibes? And let, let me tell you something. It, it's almost like I was looking for them. And I know a lot of people are saying, yeah, we know Katie is his favorite player because he always says it. Katie is my favorite player of all time. But see, he went a step further. He was like, everywhere Katie went, I went. And so um, Jalen Rose interviewed both of them. He was like, so tell me what y'all listen to. And Anthony Edwards just simply said, Katie only liked to listen to Drake. So that's what we listen to. It's like whatever my big brother wanted to do, yeah. that's what we did. You know, Anthony Edwards is kind of, he kind of, <laughs> he kind of something else. Like when I say that, he he kind of Anthony Edwards is kind of feeling Anthony Edwards, and with good reason. He's good, right? When it comes to KD, he just humbles right. himself, and I loved it. I really did. Like I loved it. Yeah, I mean, I looked at it like man, it was two two people that don't get to play with each other on a regular basis, um, right. having a good time. Like a lot of these right. players that are not around each other, they don't run in the same circles. So right. when they did get around each other, they just clicked. Um, I want to say they probably met up at camp for like a month before they reported to the Olympics, and maybe I two months. Say three weeks. Um, three weeks. Because it, it was real short, right after the season. Yup, it was right after the season. Um, three weeks. So for them to get that chemistry going and and camaraderie, because that's a lot of times the problem with the Olympics. Um, those other teams have been playing together for years, mm -hmm. so it's not really like you know something new like you know nba they just throw the best out of the best together and hope it just mesh and sometimes sometimes it don't i remember the one year we take bronze that year um yeah it didn't mesh that year it was horrible that year um so we're not even talking about the world games because i think the world games we didn't even place that one year uh it was it was tragic um but there was some things that <laughs> there were some things that kind of shocked me jason tatum did not play much 
if any, in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. I think he had zero mm-hmm. points. Uh, now, everybody's he, questioning he why. Baskets, but you're right. He didn't play very much, but you got to look at that roster, though. You look at that roster, and I guess, is it Steve Kerr? He's the head coach, right? I think it was. I think Steve Kerr was the head coach, and yeah. and I guess I guess Steve Kerr said, "Hey, you know, let me put you know who who else didn't play? Um, what's a dark skinned guy named who now plays for Boston? Uh, Holiday? Is it Holiday? Yeah, Holiday. You yeah. barely see Drew, him Drew, on the floor, and his defense is, you know, he, he's one of the best defensive players. Like, so you gotta you gotta think when you got all the you know." great players out there when you're on that Olympic team, unless you like one of those top ones. Anthony Edwards didn't play a whole lot. Anthony Edwards may have played no. about four, five minutes, maybe six minutes. They'll put him in, take him out, put him in, take him out. You, you see what I'm saying? So, you know, he did his thing. Yeah, he they had to. Average, yeah, he may have averaged six They definitely points, had to space points. it. Yeah, so. And, That's how and, and, we uh, didn't speak on we got to speak on women's the WNBA team, like, yeah, we almost didn't get that thing. Like, these countries are catching up with us seriously, like, but in the talent category. But this is my thing, though. When you're talking about them, I want you to understand, man, the WNBA is in great hands in the future. The WNBA, when it comes to that Olympic team, because you got to understand, there was a lot of players that's not on there that's going to be on there in 28 when they come to L.A. Angel Reese, yes. Caitlin Clark. Yes. Uh, I could name so many others. Um, do, does Angel Reese have that Rookie of the Year trophy? She in my has, eyes, in my eyes, Angel Reese has the has the trophy because she's been consistent the whole year and lie. she's been dominating. She's been dominating. Um, even though Caitlin, Caitlin Clark has been coming on, Caitlin, it, it's still Caitlin. Caitlin Clark has changed the game altogether. These numbers that she's pulling these people into these arenas, like. The Atlanta Dream does not play in College Park. There's a, you know, we have an arena in College Park where the Atlanta Dream plays. When Caitlin Clark comes to town, they they have the State Farm Arena. They have the Big Boy Arena where the yeah. Hawks play. So Caitlin Clark has really changed the game. Now Angel Reese, if I'm not mistaken, she's coming up on 25 consecutive double doubles. That's unheard of, right? Yeah, right. Um, pretty much. I mean, I like Angel Reese. I like the jump she talk. You know, I just like her. I like, I like the way she, you know, get down. So, I hope oh, she yeah. has that. I mean, I'm just I'm pretty much. I'm just a fan. I'm just a fan of the WNBA right now. I'm, and it's it's entertaining um, more and more every year. Um, it used to be boring, right? Yes. Now, if you watch it though, they're starting to do a lot of things that the males do. Like even bring in, like when they're coming into the um, arena, they got the camera on them. They're yeah. they're critiquing their outfits and. Injuries came fits. into the On yeah. Fits, right? Now, now injuries came into the game against um, Caitlin <laughs> Clark the other day in that Dennis Rodman jersey, that old bad right. boys Rodman jersey, and right. it, it was just like, okay, this is what I want to see. Like, I mean, it ain't too many games, even in the NBA this year. I was sitting there like, yo, I want to see this matchup. Now, right. when you see one meeting the other one, oh, you definitely, you definitely want to want to get to know. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, the game is exciting. Yep. I'm 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 just I'm just asking myself because I gotta ask myself. Do you see the the WNBA reaching that plateau where we're talking about the multi million dollar contracts that these W these regular NBA players are getting? We talking about like the crazy numbers. Can you in the not even not recently, but like in a couple years, if it keeps going the way it is. Cuddy, listen, I don't see that happening in the next couple of years, maybe in five to 10, maybe, but with at least with NIL, they are, you know, up there and, and they don't have to go overseas in the summer and play ball like Brittany Griner and that type of thing. See, with NIL and all these other endorsements, they're, I don't know, Caitlin Clark pulling like six, seven million. Listen, Angel Reese said it. I make more money now than even if I played in the WNBA. So, you wow. know, she, so, I mean, five to 10. Yeah, I can see that. Um, maybe not even five to 10, because we're talking about stupid contracts for the NBA players. So, but I, I really hope they reach a plateau where they're, you know, getting paid what they deserve. So we just got to support them more. I mean, it's, it's, it's exciting. It, it's very exciting. So 
I look forward to it. We didn't even touch on football. You have to you have to guide me because see, football starts on Sunday. And uh, although I've been hearing a little talk about, you know, the Falcons this and Kirk Cousins this and and uh, Michael Penix this and we may win our division this. You gotta understand, I've been riding with Atlanta since Atlanta been riding. Right. I'm disappointed since Atlanta been here. So I'm looking forward to having a good season, but I just don't know how it's gonna happen and how it's gonna, you know. I can't. Even I'm interested in seeing how y'all season gonna be too because y'all got a lot of stuff going on. It's a lot of pieces and everything. Um, I do see some trades before the season is over coming out of Atlanta. Um, I don't Cuddy, know how they're gonna my work. Team is, my team is a beautiful mess right now. It could yeah. go either way. Yeah, and, and you know that's the best. But that's the one thing about the NFL. You never know how it's going to actually turn out because it might start off horrible, yeah. like a fire. And then next thing you know, that mug just start to click in around maybe game six or even after the bye week. And then next thing you know, when you're in the playoffs, anybody can take you. It. it ain't like you got to win four games. You just got to win that one game. So, you know. So it, what, 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 what Detroit doing this year? You know, what? I had a conversation with a guy the other day. I'm not a Detroit fan, but – um. I told him, I said, if Detroit can be consistent like they were last year and they can get deeper into the playoffs, I see the Super Bowl for Detroit within two to three years. Um, hmm. They they definitely are trying to get another piece. I think they're one piece away from making um, the conference championship. Uh, but like I said, it it, it it depends on if they can catch fire at the right time. Yeah. That's all it is. It's hard to start off the season undefeated and run the whole gauntlet and then get into the playoffs. Like, I think you got to stumble first, find where you messing up, make those adjustments. And after you make those adjustments, then get it get it going towards the playoffs. I, I'm not a big fan of bye weeks, um, especially when the like, you know, the, the playoffs, unless you are very beat up. If you're very beat up, I'll give you that bye week. But some teams don't need that bye week. Some teams and you, need to and, actually and, and get in there like and get dis- it going. Yeah, you don't like to disrupt the momentum. Like I get what you're saying. Um, let me let me pull up some things real quick. I you did take a trip this last past weekend. I correct? did. I did. Since we're on football and we're talking about football, let's talk about college football. let one of, one of the things that's kind of exciting and still exciting after a whole year is you know. You know him like I know him, prime time. Yeah. Uh, it, it showed me the money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know, it, we got to talk about Colorado, man. Okay. Colorado, very high expectations for this team this year. Um, you actually went down there. Uh, tell us about the experience that what you what you were going to do and what actually happened. So we looked at the schedule. Um, they had a game on Saturday, the, what was Saturday, the 31st, the 31st, Saturday maybe, the was 30th. maybe the 30th, 30. yeah, yeah, Saturday was 31st, yeah. so the game was on the 31st, then they switched the game to Thursday, and um, I had already booked my flight and everything, so we, we were still going to go, I went to a game last year in Folsom Stadium, it's like, you know, I go to the games here in Atlanta and it's, it, it, yeah, it, it just can't compare to Folsom Stadium. Like, those kids are so excited. Well, Atlanta would probably be the same way if we ever get a winning team. But <laughs> don't say nothing about my team, though. I can say it, but don't you say nothing about my team. So I went to a game last year. It was very exciting, very. But they switched the game to Thursday. So I still went to Denver and uh, the weather was beautiful. I love Denver. It's such a pretty place. Um, you just say no black folks in Denver. You know, it's very, very pretty. Like, I kid you not. One of my favorite restaurants, and I think one of yours too, is Snooze. So they had a Snooze. Yes. They had a Snooze yes. in Denver. We, we ate at Snooze for three consecutive mornings because the breakfast was so good. So there was this little kid, and I'm I, I, not exaggerating. He was about two. So they sat him, them next to us because we were already there. And the whole time this little boy was staring at me like this, Cuddy. He was amazed. So so I'm thinking, okay, he's one or two. They live in Denver, most likely. Or we were at uh, this place called Lone Tree, which is still in Denver. But, you know, they're sectioned off. 
and uh, it's predominantly, you know, white. And so I was, I was saying to myself, I wonder if he's had, you know, any experience with, you know, in-person black folk because he could not stop staring. Even when we looked over, because I mean, if it was an adult, I, I would probably say something, but you know, kids are innocent. And so he could, I'm talking about he was eating his pancakes. He was just. He's like, it's one of them. I've seen yeah, that like, on TV. What, he, he probably didn't say it's one of them. He probably said, what is that? Wow. Like, what is that? And so, you know, I always got to put on the show. I don't care if it's kids or adults or whoever, but when I see you staring, I'm going to put on the show for you. And then he really couldn't stop staring. But um, <laughs> <laughs> Denver was nice. I loved it. I would have liked to see the game, but um, me and my girl, me and my sister, Alexis, we're trying to go back. It just depends. You know, Denver's kind of expensive. Okay. Um. So, and then it, it, it kind of conflicts with me going to my Falcons games, uh, I don't know what's going on in Atlanta. They they think that we're a winning team last year because those tickets are crazy right now. So if y'all start winning, I'll start paying that money to go see y'all. But y'all got to show me some things first because those tickets are crazy, Cuddy. Yo, they trying to pay for that arena. That's what it is, man. That, <sighs> but, that but, arena. But when they, not, when they not, opened not that arena, it was nice. It's yeah. still nice. Yeah, facts. Not to cross subjects, but um, Colorado – they they have to be more consistent. We have to play more. They have to play more defense. Um, I'm just hoping for a a better season than last year. I think there were four games, four and six last last season. Yeah. Yep. So anything past four wins is a win. Um, you know, I just ride with Dion. Like he he made sure that all the the fathers on the team. Like if you have a, a child on the team, he he um partner with the with a neighboring bank in Colorado and he's opening up accounts for all the fathers on the team with kids. Right. And so see Dion does things that matter that other coaches don't do. Like he he's he's a player development type coach. And uh he he helps these players to be better men in the future. And so I'm saying this because it's gonna lead us into what we need to talk about tonight. Now now Dion I think even when it's all said and done, he's not going to get the credit that he deserves. Right. Um, even with going back to um, his his contributions over at the HBCUs um, programs, um, they're always going to talk about the star of Dion, but they're not going to talk about the leadership that he um, imposes on his teams and his players, um, the expectations that he imposes. Because I, as, like I said, as a former player, a coach that put expectations on you. It's like, let's just, like you said, it's like a father figure to these players and they want to make their father proud and you go out, but he's leading by example and even setting up these accounts for these fathers that a lot of these kids, we've talked about it on past shows, don't know anything about credit. They don't know anything about banking. Right. Um, it, it, it's very hard for them to come up with any type of thought process of balancing a checkbook. So a lot of this stuff is learned when you get onto campus and you kind of learned it the hard way, like after making so many mistakes, but a person actually sitting down with you and actually giving you the advice and the tools, yo, that's remarkable. So I take my hat off to Dion for that, man, because that, that is lessons that is not going to make it in on no test. Uh, they're not going to ask them what a kid when they go to the NFL Columbine, um, uh, what did Dion teach you? Like there's, it's going to be about your skills. Well, can I can I just insert this? It's a good thing Dion doesn't need that kind of validation. Yes, we should exactly. give it to him. Exactly. Yes, we should praise him for what he does, but he will let you know in a hot New York minute that I do what I do for God. And I don't need that validation because he realizes that he's probably never going to get it. And I'll say this other thing about Dion. If there's a player, and he's really interested in that player coming to play for him, he does not send a rep to go talk to those parents. He no. goes himself. So see, that's another part. Like a lot of people send their rep to talk to these kids. Not not just the big stars. I'm talking about like um, the kid Horn Jr. whose dad is incarcerated. Yeah. So he makes sure that, you know, Horn Jr. talks to his dad and, you know, he makes sure that he says, hey, you're playing for your dad. Your dad is watching you, you know, it, see, it's it's those kind of things that set Dion apart from the rest for me. And and that's, that's the understanding of, yo, man, he's a remarkable player. 
Absolutely. He was a he was a hall of he is a hall of famer. He is a hall of famer. But fan. but just as a man teaching other men because yes. we're not boys at that point. You're a man. Mm-hmm. Um, he he just man. Like I said, I take my hat off to him. Yeah, me uh, too. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna talk about the game real quick though. Um, good game. Um, they were down. I think like three points at halftime. Um, <sighs> they they came back striking in the third <laughs> quarter, and then. They almost, almost gave that game away. Almost don't count. Travis Hunter is a beast with his little. Oh baseball. yes, yes, yes. That end zone catch, like it's it's pro players that ain't doing that. I'm just saying. Speaking of pro players, it was a bunch of pro scouts in the stands. Always in always. the stands checking him out, and it and it was very noted by the um the announcers and uh, the TV analysts uh all game of the NFL players checking him out. Seeing if would he be a better fit as a, a receiver or a cornerback, like they're trying to figure out. Like, what I say is the if he's healthy, injury free, he's gonna be a problem when he get to the league. He's little. See, he, his body type kind of reminds me of Ocho. Um, <sighs> he's 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 very he, he's a he's a little guy, but he's quick and he's a nice. I, I think. Um, yeah, you're right. If he can stay injury free, but he's just nice. I mean, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there, and it's crazy that I'm thinking about it right now. Who is um Shadar's uh, role model as far as an NFL player? We're not talking about his dad, Tom Brady. Tom Brady has been oh, Tom Brady, training. Tom, Brady. Tom, Tom Brady's, Brady's been boy. training and coaching yeah. Shadar for a couple years now. What was Tom Brady's go to players? Edelman. Yeah. And uh uh what's my man name? Uh oh, uh Amandola. It was a couple of them, and they all were small receivers, yeah. slot yeah. receivers. Yeah. It, now, is it coincidence? I don't know. But I'm just saying, you gotta look at it. The person that's showing you how to get this this job done with what uh-huh. you have uh-huh. had the same exact body type player and receivers. The, those those Patriot receivers was not big receivers. The biggest receiver that uh, Tom Brady had was uh, Randy Moss. That was his biggest target. But let's be real, they didn't win the championship with Randy Moss. Listen, I know we got some stuff we got to talk about, but oh, how yeah, you sign a 4.7 milli deal with Nike? And was he 20? He 19 or 20? Nah, I think he's 20. And, I think he's and, 20. You, and you got Tom Brady on speed dial. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. This is right. and I mean, we can go ahead and get out, but the boy put on some weight in his arms he and the did. boy put in weight in his legs. He did. That's all I'm saying. He Off did. the all season, he got bigger. He did. He did. Hey, I'm interested in seeing how this I do them see them getting way more than four wins. When is the um, next game? When is the next game? They actually play in Nebraska. I can tell you right now. I want to say it's this week. They play Nebraska games, games, games. Okay, come on now, load it up. Cuddy, I know this is gonna sound crazy, right? So when I say it, you just you just be like, I don't know. But we should hit a game. We should hit one of those Colorado Buffs games. Oh yeah. How I'm, dope would that be? And yo, I'm down for that. Podcast, bro. I'm down for that. They play September the seventh. They play Nebraska, seven thirty. Okay. okay. So that's right. Saturday. Yep. Oh, I gotta make sure I'm home. I gotta make yep. sure I'm home. So All right. Um, we was talking about fathers and we were talking about decisions that 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 we as men make. So the conversation started because we were talking about Cam Newton and Nick Cannon's interviews uh, on different podcasts uh, in the last couple of weeks. And they had different opinions on about being married, but also just could continue to have kids. So we got to ask, why are men scared of commitment, lifetime commitment? being married why are we scared to make that jump is it is it is it we scared to throw uh throw in our player card or or is it just we just ain't found that one that we ready to settle down with so toy let me ask you when it comes to nick cannon and, and cam newton as examples and uh i want to say cam newton has what seven kids or eight kids i think he has seven and i think there's one on the way Okay, so he has, and we we're not even talking about the numbers with Nick Cannon right now because mm-hmm. I think he got a baby on the way, on the way, on the way. Yeah, um, 
I don't even know. I think it last count was like eleven with Nick, maybe ten or eleven. So yeah, yeah, I think somebody's pregnant right now, so that might be the eleventh kid. Um, they're 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 steady creating, but what do you think? is the reason that they really don't want to commit. Now, they gave it examples of why, but do you think it's other issues or do you think that it's just they're not ready to settle down? Well, Cuddy, I'm going to give you three reasons and then you, 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 I'll bounce three reasons off of you and then you, you let me know what you think. So the first reason I think uh, they've not seen successful marriages. Right. And if you if you don't have a blueprint of something, then you're gonna say, well, if, if I don't have like a guide to show me the how to, you know, how do I do it? Second reason I think is because um, they're just scared to fail. True. You see True. what I'm saying? Um, I I think marriage shouldn't be an institution that you enter into lightly because it is a very marriage is a business. I don't know if people know that you could love somebody, but You've got to be able to, you know, maneuver and you've got to learn when something's an asset, when something's a liability, you know, marriage is a business. Um, I think a lot of them are scared to fail. And then the third thing is, I think most men are non-believers of monogamy, right? Mm. I think men think, man, it's a ball and chain. I'm, I'm going to be stuck with her, you know, for a lifetime, but. The, the thing you have to understand is before you even enter into a marriage, you got to make sure that the person you're marri marrying is your homeboy or your homegirl and that y'all can kick it. And that even when you're not head over heels in love with them, you know, that y'all still boys. Right. And, and that will sustain you. And, and you, you kind of won't look at it as like, you know, this is a ball and chain. You know, I got to, you know, throw my player card away and that type thing. Um marriage is something that you have to enter into with maturity. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? So for me, those are the biggest reasons. I, I don't think men are huge fans of monogamy. I hear that you guys are hunters. I, I can't speak. I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, I, I, women, women are a little bit different. You know, if we feel secure and we feel safe and we feel, you know, that we're wanted and, you know, you show us attention we don't ask for much. A lot of men say, oh, we don't ask for much. Yeah, but y'all y'all not fans of monogamy. That's the thing. A lot of people say monogamy is not natural. Right. For men, you know, you, you can speak on that aspect. But so for my three, it is they didn't have a, you know, positive role model. You know, our grandparents. Yeah, but after grandma and grandma, grandma and granddad gone, then who? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's true. Not, not a blueprint. And then I think they're afraid to fail. And then the third thing is, you know, I just don't think that you guys are huge fans of monogamy. You know, you just still like to, you you want what you want. You have a good wife at home and she can do all these things. But, you know, sometimes you just like to differentiate. If you know what I mean. So this is my thing. Um, the example of, of a positive marriage would also include successful men of even men of color but successful men in marriages you see a lot of these these million and billionaires get married but the the marriage don't last no more than a couple of years or you don't really see people in the, the the limelight or uh superstars sports definitely sports um stay married for 20 30 years um is very rare so those examples is very much needed because I, I okay let's do this me getting married and staying married is probably more easier than a person worth 45 million 100 why is, million why is that cutting why is because, that? and i'm gonna tell you why because the pressure is less on me because the financial things that i provide is is normal. I can provide a home. I can provide cars. I can provide trips. But when you talk about life changing money, now you have another thing that I don't have <laughs> working my job and, and getting my checks is ego. Ego is when you get a, a couple million dollars, especially if you young, you're going to have an ego out of this world. So your ego is going to tell you, hey, you can have any woman you want. You don't have to put up with this fight. You don't have to sit there and, and figure these things out. Oh, oh, you talking spicy today. You can leave. I'm going to be okay. 
Cuddy, it's not just your ego. You got a couple milli. You can. It gives you access to a different level of woman. Exactly. You, you see exactly. what I'm saying? Um, so you really have to know who you are with money. Because money, I tell people this all the time. Money allows you to go to places when you don't have money. Of course, I mean, that's the obvious. But it also gives you access to things that you never would have thought. Like women that you would not believe you know, will come oh, on yes. to you. You oh, have yes. to know who you are. Like, no. I use LeBron, for example. Either LeBron is very discreet or LeBron is very committed to his marriage. It's one of the two. I yeah. do I do believe that when you, when you, you know, whether you're a woman or a man, you you will, from time to time, you're going to make mistakes. We're none of us, all of us are flawed. We're not perfect. So... I have heard him say, and I'm I'm just not talking about LeBron. I could say um, Angela Bassett and Courtney Vance. Angela True. Bassett, they've been married for a very long time. True. Um. Yeah. So so I think you know when you know who you are. I also think Cuddy, it matters what the both of you bring to the table, right? Yeah. Courtney Vance probably say, hey, you know, I make my money, but I know Angela Bassett fine as a mug. You know, I leave her today. She gonna have somebody. I mean, she may not have nobody, but it'll be by choice. Do you see what I'm saying? It's each other's worth. You value each other's worth. Uh, it, it, that, that, but that's what I'm saying. When you go back to you talking about twenty year olds, thirty year olds, when you you that young, you feel that you have all the time in the world. And if you have all the money in the world, and you think you got all the time in the world, then f- settling down is not going to be a. Uh, you know, they might look at their peers. They might look at say, um, oh, what is the player? Ah. Uh, Stacks, stacks. Um, uh, Jackson, uh, got the podcast. Um, uh, with Matt Barnes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Stephen yeah. Jackson, Stephen Jackson, Stephen yeah. Jackson. If y'all don't know, uh, <laughs> Stephen Jackson once was engaged to get married. The woman didn't want to sign the prenup, if I'm not mistaken, right. and he canceled the wedding the day of the wedding, like right at the wedding. It wasn't like a couple weeks. It was at the wedding. Like, Wait, yeah, this talking going. about the NBA player. Yeah, the NBA player, Stephen Jackson. That's his name. Yep. I they call him Stacks Five. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly who you're talking about. And, yep. and and he said, so so Cuddy, this is my take on a prenup, right? When you have your own and you meet somebody who has more, why are you thinking you're supposed to leave with more than you came with? Sign a prenup. I I've never understood that, honestly. And it's a but this is a thing though. It, a lot it might of people be because feel, I have own money too. Huh? A lot of people feel that I'm a I'm a I'm giving you my all. A lot of women might think I'm giving you my best years, the years where I can go out and get a man. And then I'm I hate to think that they think that they got their their lottery ticket. So if I'm giving you my good years, my next five years, ten years, and then you decide you don't want to be with me, then now I'm just out here. I don't have those same looks and the same appeal and the same youth. So I'm giving you this. I think you should give me something back. That's what the the mindset of that prenup is okay i don't agree with it but that's the mindset of the prenup okay so let me make an adjustment to my statement i just made okay Mm -hmm. so if you meet somebody and they have a considerably more money than you right i feel like if if y'all part ways you should leave with what you came with unless he's feeling generous and say hey or y'all have kids and You know, something like that is in the mix. We didn't mention kids. Okay. So we're talking about what she came with, what he came with. However, if she was in a gym like Savannah and LeBron, there is no prenup. Do you understand? And I totally agree. I totally agree. They've been together since high school, right? Right. Um, A lot of people didn't understand Kobe and Vanessa's um, situation. Like Kobe was still in. No, no, no. Kobe was Kobe when he met Vanessa. He just wasn't on that level. No prenup. Mm-mm. Now, Kobe was still Kobe Bryant, though, because I think she met him at, like, some video thing or some shoot they were doing for a commercial for him. So, you know, he was still Kobe Bryant, just not on the Kobe Bryant level. That's all I'm saying. Right. Um, Savannah and, and um, LeBron, they're different, because although I'm sure she knew he was going to be a mega million dollar star, they, they went to the prom together. She was pregnant with Bronny when they went to the prom, that type thing. So yeah. if she if she was in a gym with him and and I say that she was with him in the early years, 
then, you know, she's entitled to what she's entitled to simply because before the money came, she was already there. Yeah. And, and then the, the sacrifices that she had to make, um, cause they had a child early. So she was a mother at home, you know, taking care of the kid. And then another kid came. And you know um, where he was, you know, where he was, he was playing in the games. I re I vividly remember being at the YMCA and Savannah was about to go into um, labor with um, Bronnie. And they said, LeBron, are you going to, you know, sit this game out? He's like, um, as important as, as you know, I would love to be there. He was like, my team needs me. And, um, and a sacrifice. And, so that's what I'm saying. And he, he, he says it so often, Cuddy, I could not do what I do if it weren't for Savannah. Not only with the home business, it's, you know, the, the business side of it. He doesn't have to worry about that. She puts people in place. Like when he was um, over in France getting ready for the Olympics, she was at um, Ronnie's game, you know, right. with playing in the summer league. So it's a lot of sacrifice there. You have to have a partner that will sign a prenup so that you'll know that they are in it for you. She has to have her own bag. I mean, she can be pretty. She can be fine. I say this all the time. You know, you need to get your own bag because if, if you got your own bag, you don't care about signing a prenup. No. You don't no. care. Talk. So this girl from Steven Jackson, I would have said, all right, bet. I'll sign a prenup. And, and she didn't. You, she didn't. And if you do what you're supposed to do, he going he gonna to take care of you. If he messed up nine times out of ten, he going to be like, you know what? I'm going to make sure you're good anyway. Right. So why not sign a prenup? I just, I mean, I just see that a little bit differently. But like I said, when you're, when you're, when you know, you know. So I look at it like this. When we're talking about our original question is why men are, some men are scared of commitment. Um, you got to look at it as who did I meet? And is this person that one? See, I might, I might be into you right now. It's something about you that sparks me. It's something that makes me want to get to know you. And that's cool. Then I get to know a little bit about you. And I'm like, all right, but I'm physically attracted to you. The baby might come. The baby might be playing. The baby might not be playing. Who knows? And, but am I obligated to marry you is the question. So if I feel like you're not the one I want to spend the rest of my life with, why should I make that decision? So I'm, I'm looking at it as these people that's laying down having these babies willingly these women that's with Nick Cannon that's having these babies willingly like, okay, I want to have your baby is, is about 50% guilty as he is because they are not the woman he wants to marry. He hasn't met the woman he wants to marry. Matter of fact, take that back. He did meet the woman he wanted to marry. He married her. Her name was Mariah Carey. It didn't work out. So he hasn't met his next Mariah Carey yet. He's met all these other women and they might have dope friendships and all this. And that's great. But when you saying, hey, Nick, let's go have a baby. You're not on birth control. So, you know, the, the, the chances of you getting pregnant is very high, especially with Nick Cannon. I mean, he breathe on you getting pregnant. So that's that's like the 50 percent guilt that they're carrying with him. So is it his fault that he's not married and he's having these kids? Yeah, but also those other women that saying that, hey, I know you had a baby by her last week. I'm going to get pregnant with, by your baby this week. Why are these women not saying, hey, yo, uh, you just had a baby over there? I'm straight. Now, we can kick it. We can build. But I'm not going to just be a baby number three or baby number 17. Like, that's that's crazy. So is he scared of commitment? Um. I don't think he's scared of commitment. It's just nobody's came into his life that he wants to change his life for. So these women that's at home taking care of the kids, they're making a sacrifice. Well, that man has to make a sacrifice too because you want to change your lifestyle. You can go out and have any woman you want at any part of the world, but you got to sacrifice that because you want to be with this said woman. That's the problem. A lot of men ain't making that sacrifice. That's kind of deep, um, especially when you talk about Nick. Um, so okay. let, let, let's 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 focus on Cam for a minute. And right, right. Talk about Cam. Um, matter of fact, I visit Cam's cigar bar from time to time. Very good vegan food. You understand me? Okay. Very good. And um, I like his spot. So when he was with Kia. 
That's the first girl he had the so he Five has kids. four biologically by her. Right. And he claims her first daughter that she had. So five by her and then two by uh, somebody else. I think they want to say they call her an Ivy model. I don't know. Uh, five, six, seven. No, no, no. Yeah, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I don't think anybody's pregnant. So Kia has five and then mm -hmm. he had two by the other girl, I think. And then he just had one by the young lady that he's with. Leah Rain or something like that, yeah. Like I said, um, I saw him with these kids. He's attentive to these kids. You know, they were out and about. Um, he 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 called every one of them by name like it was nothing, except the baby. The baby wasn't there. The baby, I think the baby's too young. So it was like seven kids with him. And I said, I mean, even before I knew it was Cam, because they were sitting there. Well, I kind of knew it was Cam because you know how he wears that hat, his hair out, his hat all the time. Yeah. So yeah. I kind of knew it was him. And he big, like he big. Oh, yeah. So, he ain't no little boy. Yeah, he big. Even sitting down, I was like, I was like, that looked like Cam. Okay. He caught, he was very attentive, but take, take him out of this environment where they were out to eat. Mm -hmm. Is he able to give each one of those babies the individual attention they need for character development and, you know, showing each one of them what they need? Maybe he is, Cuddy. I don't know. You know, it's, it's hard. And it depends on if they're spaced out. So if you have eight kids in Atlanta, then possibly so better than say a Nick Cannon with a kid in New York, two kids in L.A., two kids in Florida. Two, like it, that is very hard. No matter if you got a private jet or you Superman with a cape, you're going to be spread thin. Now, if all his kids are in Atlanta, he can he can do it. I am not going to sit here and cut say it, he can't. Cut it, cut it, cut it. Let, let me interrupt you. OK, if all of his kids are in Atlanta, one kid is going to play soccer. One True. kid is gonna play this. One Cam gotta do a podcast. He gotta be at the rest the the restaurant, the cigar bar sometimes. One kid is gonna do something else. But there is not enough twenty four hours in a day or fifty two weeks in a year for that with eight but, kids. But let's do this though. We was talking off air before the show, and I asked this question: If it was all by the same woman, would it be a problem? It's not a problem now. Right. Because he right. thinks that he's managing it well. And so, you know, who who are we to say? I'm just simply saying this is a different perspective on why maybe they're not getting married. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So right. that they, they want to procreate. Maybe they have other people stepping in when they can't be there for these kids. But my question is, and nobody has to answer it because, you know, my opinion doesn't matter very much to them. But. I'm simply saying, as a parent who was very involved in the upbringing of my kids' activities and what each one of them were doing, if if you have to bring in other people to, you know, kind of manage how you, you know, these activities or whatever they're doing, and then Cam got, you know, football camps and this and this, and, you know, Cam busy. Does sure. that take away from the parenting, from your parenting as, you know, what the kid says, well, you know, if daddy's there. To me, yeah. that, to me, that matters. Even if all the kids are in Atlanta, it ain't enough It ain't enough for Cam to go around and do that. Maybe he does a phenomenal job trying. I think he's a good guy. But the young lady that he did that interview with, maybe she made a very valid point. And I mean... It's I don't just, think he was prepared for that interview to go away when... No. I think as far as find, finding business-wise, he definitely wanted that interview to be what it is. But did he expect to get eight like he got eight and man got eight bro like i his answers was not he was not even prepared for some of the answers that he was trying to give but you could tell by the look on his face like on his podcast like when they'll show cam something can be so still i'd be like okay is my phone stuck and that's kind of <laughs> you know how he be watching the footage of stuff and then he'll you know comment on it that's yeah. how he was looking at the young lady and so i was like okay cam didn't expect that he but he probably was out. like, yo, you can ask me anything. Nothing's off the record. He probably said that to her. You can ask me anything. And she probably, you know, said, okay, well, then let's talk about how you procreate, but you're just not ready to get married. And it is his choice. But, like, you know, a lot of the weight has to be on the, the on the women as well. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> the sacrifice. It's, it's all a sacrifice. When Speaking from a perspective of a man that's married. Right. When I got married, I 
I had to give up a certain lifestyle. I had to, but take, let's take this all the way back. For me to have kids, because I, I didn't marry the mother of my kids. Okay. For me to have kids, which would be my son. My son was my first born. He was born in 2004. At that time, around 2002, 2003, I was doing a lot of different things. People that know, they know. I had to make a sacrifice because I knew he was coming into the world. So I had to stop doing some of the things that I was doing, stop running around some of the people I was running around. Um, It was a sacrifice. Boom. In 2004, right before he was born, uh, my best friend, uh, uh, Bud Touche, Sinitri Nunn, said, let's start a label. Okay, cool. All right. I don't know nothing about starting the label, but I watched enough videos of Dame Dash and Jay-Z. And them. I got this. We got this. Let's go. Um, we actually had a, a, a studio inside of a complex, apartment complex that was across town. Um, and the I'm going to be honest. The, the studio was a trap. It was a trap house. Like we, we had everything and anything going on in that, that apartment complex. Um, but it was the, the base of our record label. So I would get off of my job. I would go over there. I would make sure that the songs was being mixed and recorded. Um, we had another uh, business partner. He was making sure things was getting done. So I, I would go home, sit up at maybe to like three or four o'clock in the morning, send off emails. Now, I'm sacrificing right here. now, But the problem is the relationship was suffering because I was out all night. I was at this place, but it wasn't like I'm just out to be out. I was actually getting work done. But at home she wasn't understanding that so then that became a problem so now that's the sacrifice that i'm trying to make for the business but i'm not making a sacrifice for the home now things go left relationship does you know doesn't be there now i have to make another sacrifice i can continue doing this or i can provide for my son and be a better leader and a better role model for my son so kind of left that alone moved into a different type of situation my daughter comes. See, more sacrifices than that. Now I got to sacrifice time more because I got two kids. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, everything ain't about me at this point. But in relationship-wise, that suffers again because now I'm not giving you the focus that you need. I'm giving it to these kids or what I'm trying to do. So me and these kids don't, you know, their mother don't get to, you know, we don't get together. Boom. Now, I've always knew my wife since high school. Um, we get together, but once we decided to be married, it was more sacrifice. It's work. Um, when you, you get into marriage, it's, it's a different ball game. Like it's, it seemed easy. It's definitely not easy. If anybody has ever been married, they know when people say, Hey, you gotta work, man, you gotta work. I you always hear you be like, eh, whatever you get married. You like, nah, this is actually a job. Like you gotta do a lot of business things far as. Marriage gotta is come a business. Together. Marriage is a business. I said yes. that. Yeah. You got to come together and y'all y'all got to come to an agreement. Y'all got to come to understand. You got to understand why this person does what this person does. You got to accept flaws. A lot of men are not prepared to accept flaws, but we expect for women to accept our flaws. And that's a problem. Sacrifice. Cody, we've talked about this a thousand times on the show. Like women are just as flawed. Y'all just can't handle us when we're flawed because y'all are used to us accepting what y'all do. Then in turn, True. when we do it, y'all want to act like we, you know, stabbed your mother in the chest and, you know, that kind of stuff. So oh, if, yeah. if you're going to do it, you have to understand that at some point it's going to, I'm not going to say it's going to come back on you, but like karma is karma. It is what it is. None of us are perfect. So before you, and if you didn't even really got to be married, like in relationships, sometimes, you know, that same karma come around. I'm going to tell you something I heard Lou Will say. Lou Williams is from Atlanta. Everybody know that. Yes, yes. Lou Williams got his own uh, wing, uh, lemon pepper, barbecue, something at Magic City. I don't know. Magic about City. I was about to say Magic City. If okay, y'all so don't know about the bubble, you better look it Lou up. Will, Lou that's Lou Will's spot. <laughs> Lou Will said a lot of, you know, Lou Will got two girlfriends. Right. Yes, he And does. he makes no bones about it. He is unapologetic about it. He says when he was on the road, he used to give his girl money and go play. Then he'll come home and they'll have bliss and then he'll go on the road. But then when he retired, he's like, well, what's this? 
they're not used to being around each other like that because yeah. he was on a role playing. Now he has to learn her. You have to do the same thing, whether you're in the NBA, whether you're a regular person, no matter what you're doing. Judge Mathis and his wife are in divorce proceedings right now. I was yes. so sad to hear that. Judge Mathis said it ain't so. You be getting on a crackhead in Detroit like it ain't nothing. <laughs> Judge Mathis. Oh, I know said, a crackhead. I know a crackhead when I see a crackhead. Judge Mathis is worth 25 million, they say. He says he is very confident that he's going to win his wife back. He said it wasn't infidelity. It's just that I was neglecting my wife. Now, I don't know about you, Kelly, but. Judge Mathis is a very brilliant man. Anybody watches his show, they know that. Judge Mathis, you don't know that before you take care of them folks in your courtroom. You got to take care of home. Yeah. Something ain't right. I believe, <laughs> I believe, Judge Mathis, you probably ain't telling the truth about the infidelity, but it ain't my business. But I was just very saddened to hear that they're, you know, going through divorce proceedings. The wife, the wife filed for divorce. Not him, the wife. Now this would happen. No prenup. No prenup. She gonna get paid. She gonna definitely get paid. I'm hoping um, that they can salvage the marriage. That's what I'm hoping. But a lot of times, people don't get to know each other really before they get married, before they move into each other. Um, yeah. No matter if they they, we talk about a lot of these like our grandparents and they've been together for 40, 50 years, right? What well, what was going on in the household when they got together? Was they there uh, with each other all day, every day? More than likely, no. Mama was with the kids. Daddy was at, at the plant working, um, working 60, 70 hours a week. When daddy retired, you st you know what? It was crazy. I look back at my parents and, and great role models, even for marriage, great role models. But I would sit there, and as a kid, I would watch my parents argue about a lot of stuff. And I, as, a, as a kid, I'm like, dang, they fight all the time. But it's not really all the time. They would argue, and then they they loved each other. But the thing is, my daddy worked seven hours, seventy hours, eighty hours a week mm -hmm. at the plant. Mama worked too. So when they got together, then some of those issues would come out because they they haven't been around each other to argue. Because either he was here in the morning and she was there, she was gone, and then when she get off in the afternoon, he go to work, and at night they they see each other for a couple hours, then they go to sleep, right? But the weekends. We there all day together. So then you think about when you get retired, you see a lot of retired our older people arguing all the time. Yeah. And it's cute because you'd be like, look at them. They fighting at the all <laughs> But in reality, they're spending more time with each other. They're getting to know each other. They're learning they, each other, right? They have hey, to. You know, a lot of us don't know how to argue fairly. When I say that, we as women, and I know I do it, I'm guilty of it. I will press your buttons and I will get under your skin like nobody else can. On purpose. Right? On purpose. We have to understand how to argue fairly because just like I can get under your skin, then, you know, you can do the same thing. So we have to learn how to, when we disagree on something, sometimes you got to leave stuff and say, okay, we agree to disagree. But no, we always want to be right or y'all always want to be right. We have to learn how to argue fairly. And then another thing is one of the things and I know you're probably going to be surprised by me saying this, too, because I know I surprise you a lot. <laughs> but um, back in the day with our grandparents, our grandmothers actually needed our grandfathers financially to make it. There was no such thing as her picking up them brood of kids and moving out somewhere because she got her own money. That ain't how that worked. You know what I'm saying? Financially, we depended on grandpa a lot more. Now yeah. that we have our own money, it's like, we, I ain't got to put up with this because I got my own bag. I can, you know what I'm saying? So then she tried a, a bit harder to make it work. Granddaddy was a straight hoe most times. Yeah, yeah, now, yes. the, granddaddy, the granddaddy that we knew ended up not being the granddaddy that she knew. He was different. He was her husband. And he probably was a straight hoe around the neighborhood. Like, there's some people even now, cut it, that's your cousin that you probably don't even know about. And if I can say this respectfully, Granddad ain't everybody daddy who grandma said he was. Right, that's true. It was, a, it was a lot of mixing and you know matching going on. However, I'm just saying they were they were more apt to make things work because financially it didn't make sense for her to grab those four, five, six, or seven kids or whatever and then go somewhere and be independent on her own. We we can do that now. We may have a kid or two or three, 
But if she making her own money, she can do it. And so we are less likely to say, you know what, let me, let me, let's go to counseling and see, you know, if we can salvage this thing or let's try to make this work. To me, our independence is, it's like a, 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 a blessing and a curse. And, and that's yeah. what I'll say. And then you talking to somebody that's independent. I tell you all the time, cutting on air and off. Your co-host is a stand-up guy and I am independent, but there are certain things that women, modern day women, we don't deal with because we make our own money. Most times we make it more than our partner. You know what I'm saying? And that's true. Now, it, it goes back around to this Cam Newton and Nick Cannon thing. Um, back to what I said. You you have a different mind state when you're worth like you don't have to work with somebody to provide. When you got those those households, that's everything is 50 50. Like I need you to provide this house and this lifestyle I'm living and you need me. You, you don't you you worth 50 million. You don't have to put up with an argument like you might not. You wake up that day. You like, I don't feel like arguing today. And then that person wants to argue with you. You're like, you know what? This ain't working out. And it's quick. You are quicker to do that because it's nothing forcing you to deal with that said issue. A lot of these times, you know, there's people right now that's. <laughs> let me stop. There's, dude, there's some dudes right now, and I'm, I'm gonna be honest. There's some dudes right now that's homeless, and and I don't mean they living on the street. And they ain't got no clothes. I'm talking about they living with a woman right now, and they can't go out on their own. And they got to they got to sit there and argue. They got to take whatever that punishment they feel that they because they don't have nowhere to go. And then vice versa. There's some women out there that can't leave that situation because they're not able to stand on their own feet right now. So they got to go through that, that, that mental abuse, that, that, that emotional abuse, sometimes physical. even physical abuse, you know, what I'm saying because they're not able to stand. But if you got somebody that's worth a couple hundred thousand and they don't need somebody. That argument is very, very small. You might tell somebody, you know what, get out. And they will actually get out because <laughs> they don't need you, bro. So it's, it's, it's a lot of times they're not prepared to sacrifice ego. They're not prepared to sacrifice um, uh, 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 just, just lifestyle change. Because me being able to date 15 women women is not, not doing that again. That's, I'm changing my lifestyle. I'm changing the way I think. That's like saying, okay, I can I can go eat whatever cereal I want, whatever type, Frosted Flakes, Lucky Charms, Cocoa Pebbles, whatever. But then I'm going to change because I want to just eat Frosted Flakes for the rest of my life. Some okay. people ain't ready to make that commitment. That's a commitment. And and it comes with maturity, but you did not touch on the monogamy part that I said. Uh, so the monogamy. That's monogamy now. Okay. Let me ask you this. Do you think everybody should be married? No. Marriage is you, not for everybody. Exactly. So when you talk about the monogamy, is monogamy for everybody is the question. No. I, I read a meme the other day, and it, this is so true, and it got me to thinking. It says, all these places in the world all these people in the world and you sitting there thinking your soulmate is in your city. <laughs> and it got me to think, and I'm like, you know, that's crazy, but it's so true. But if you don't have the chance to go, but what if you out looking for your soulmate going to country to country, coast to coast, but your soulmate is doing the same exact thing. You're going to miss your soulmate. So is there such thing as soulmates? So monogamy, you got to understand is that for you? Because I I believe, me personally, I believe that monogamy is not for everybody. Everybody sh uh, shouldn't practice monogamy because what happens is now a lot of times you're going to start sacrificing or you're just going to start settling. It's not even sacrifice anymore. Now you're settling because you want to fit the mold of what everybody else think you should do. And if that's not for you, you're not going to be happy. So that person you with, they're not going to be happy. So now you got two unhappy people faking like they're happy for years. And I'm going to be honest, our grandparents did it because you know why? Grandma and granddaddy went in the same room. If you really thought about it, grandma had her own room down the hallway. And I'm just saying, but they sacrificed and they settled because, like you said, grandma needed granddaddy. 
Granddaddy was the provider. Grandma couldn't Grandma, leave I, all I, the kids. I, what, I, what I said was they needed them financially. I yeah. also said some of your cousins walking around here ain't granddaddy's kids. And that's granddaddy got true too. kids walking around Outside. here. Outside. was your cousin. Yeah, that's what I yeah, said. Definitely. So, definitely. So did they practice monogamy? At times, I think they did. Yeah. Um, I, I think you have to, like you mentioned earlier, you said Nick Cannon hasn't found the one. I personally don't believe there is a one. I believe that you can find somebody that you have a lot of things in common with, and I believe you have to learn them. And I think you have to do your work to become the person that you want to be. Now, if your partner is able to grow with you and not remain stagnant or be resentful of letting you follow your dreams, we've talked about that previously on the show, you have to give your partner the, the opportunity to follow it, to grow as much as they'd like to. Then you right. support them. Sometimes your partner outgrows you. Sometimes you outgrow your partner. I don't believe that there's a one. I believe that there are two imperfect people that come together and y'all learn each other. And then you find out what make you happy. I'm going to tell you, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett, a lot of people give Jada Pinkett and Will Smith a lot of flack about what they do in their marriage. But I wholeheartedly get it because they were so young when they got married. Jada didn't want to get married. Will said, okay, we're having these kids. I already had a failed marriage. We're going to get married because you're pregnant, blah, blah. They did. Jada, her vision, marriage was never that for her. And right. then Will said, okay, but let's get married. And she did it because she said, okay, I'll do it. I really don't want to. Her mom was telling her, you were having this baby, blah, blah. I feel like marriage is not for everybody. Neither is monogamy. Basically what I'm saying is I think if you know who you are and you work hard to be who you want to be, sometimes some other people don't fit into that painting with you. The the, the picture that you're painting or the person that you want to be, right. everybody's not meant to be with you, Cubby. I just don't believe that. Oh, she's the one. I, I personally don't believe in that. I believe that you, you can find somebody and if they allow you to be you as flawed and as imperfect as that is, and, and vice versa, I think you probably got an honest chance of that working. I, I think like with marriage and monogamy, um, you you definitely have to sacrifice. Um, you definitely have to do the work on yourself. But you have to do a little bit more work finding that person that is not the one. It's, it's more or less, does that person make you a better person? And I, I know a couple of people that's married. I know a couple. I know a couple of people, in my eyes, they have successful marriages, but I'm not in their home with them. And they'll <laughs> yeah. tell you that they have their ups and their downs. Right. But they also say, and when I talk to the men, of, they'll say, yo, she made me a better person. My best friend, my best friend, the kid, my kid's godfather, uh, Alan Parks, he, um, I like to, you know, go ahead and pop my own collar. I feel I had something to do with him finding his wife. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell a story, and they might get mad. I don't care. Um, we were in college. We was at Central Michigan, and he met her our sophomore year. And uh, she came over to the dorm and to watch wrestling. They had met in class. They talked about, like, they both like wrestling. She came over and watched wrestling. This is back when Stone Cold Steve Austin rock, right? Yeah. So she comes over. We sitting there watching wrestling. Boom. We were all, you know, just sitting there. Great night. Monday night raw. We eating pizza. You know, normal, normal night in the uh, dorms. She gets ready to go. But you can tell that she was feeling my boy. Now, nah. dog, I love you. But I don't think he was picking up on the signs. <laughs> so, you know, he, he walked her out. Cool. He come back in. I said, you know, I'm smiling. I'm like, hey, yo, man, hey, you finna, you finna, you finna holler at that? No, no, no. She just cool. We got class together. I said, nah, bro. Uh, nah, she feeling you. He like, nah, nah, nah. I said, no, I'm for real. Like, ask her out. Like, she, nah, she didn't come over here to watch wrestling, bro. That is not what she came over to watch wrestling. She came over to kick it with you. I'm trying to tell you, dog. She might be the one. Like, for real, for real. Now, I remember saying this. Fast forward, they had their ups and downs. They they get through them. We college kids. We learning ourselves. We learning each other. Next thing you know, they married. They just celebrated 
20 some years of marriage um Whoa, this last yeah. i want to say 20 years i really want to say 20 years they they celebrated if my son is yes they definitely celebrated 20 years of marriage uh this last past uh june so you can meet that person but he will always tell you that she made him a better person the crazy part is i watched him become a better person i watched him become a man because this woman who was younger than him grew with him but also molded and shaped him into the man he is and a lot of times us men we don't like to hear that a woman shaping us no 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 you're gonna <laughs> shape each other we like you're gonna shape each other she gonna help make you she gonna help mold you but you gonna also help mold her yeah and y'all gonna y'all gonna grow together y'all y'all gonna fall together but y'all gonna grow together if y'all both put in the work if that's the one that you're willing to change right. for Ver vice versa she got to be willing to change for him as well. Somebody got to take the backseat. Somebody got to, you know what I'm saying? Everybody can be side to side. That's cool. But somebody got to lead at some point. Now, you might switch up. You might lead, you know what I'm saying, this next six months. Okay, but then you're going to need a time where you got to rest. Okay, don't worry. Daddy got you. I'm out here. I'm leading. All right, cool. We're going the same direction. And that's what it is. A lot of times we got to meet that person that's going to make us a better person. If she I make agree. you better, then hey, I'm just saying, what, what else are we looking for, brother? I agree nah, with that. I, those I, wanna, I don't think they met those people though. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I, so. I just want to um, ask you one question. So, th this part that you're talking about, where she makes him a better person and he makes her a better person, and they grow together. Cam Newton and Nick, I know that they're making money, and right now they're in their money season because both of them are very, very successful, and I get that. Right. right. They have right. the means to take care of these kids that they're creating. But there's an aspect in my perspective that they're missing out on. Like when you come home to your kids in one house, do you see what I'm saying? Right. There's, a, there's collectively there's I mean, I don't know how many households they got going on. It, it really ain't our business, but this is just our, you know, just our thoughts. Um there's an aspect of coming home to and being with and building with, I think that they're missing out on that. So it's either one of two things is what you said that they haven't found that yet or mm -hmm. have they worked on themselves enough to recognize that or have they matured enough to recognize Nick Carey no spring chicken. How old is Cam Newton? Uh, Cam Newton, let's look, I can look that up for you right now. And I want to say 38, but I might be wrong. Now. Wait a minute. Cam Newton is 38? I want to. Let me let me check. I wouldn't say that old. Cam Newton. We're talking about overview. He was born in 89. He is 35. All right. That's more like it. He's 35. So, I was off old. So... It, it, <laughs> But I don't know if Cam's parents are together and really that has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with Cam said he doesn't fit in it. These are his words. He doesn't fit into a box that, you know, people want him to fit in. He said when he came into the league, he was clean cut. His, his dad told him to look a certain way because he had to promote a certain image. And I get that, but he definitely, you know, is somebody that marches to the beat of their own drum. And I get that. Only thing I'm saying is, at some point, when do you start thinking about your future and building with somebody that you can grow older with? I'm not even going to say old, that you can grow older with. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, now let me ask you this, though. When we're talking about all this, are we saying that you have to enter into a commitment uh, with God to grow old with somebody? Can, can, can we as friends and lovers grow old together can i find my 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 that person my my soulmate but do i have to marry that soulmate you absolutely don't but cuddy check this out if you've been with that person for upwards of 10 15 maybe even 20 years and something happens to that person and you guys have acquired a home together mm -hmm. and financial things together how does that work right now, see 
and that's where it gets. That's where the technicals and that's, all, that's all I'm saying. That's yeah, all I'm saying. If there gets, are kids, if there are kids involved, he could very well may say, "I want my stuff to go to my kids." But you've been building with this woman for 10, 15, 20 years. Do, does she is she left with nothing? And she's been there by your side, helping you, supporting you. You know what I'm saying? I just it it, it all is perspective, and it just it, this kind of dialogue is needed. Because you have to do what's best for you. As long as there's an honest conversation, every time I look at this shirt, I'll be like, ooh, this is a dope shirt. <laughs> it's an honest conversation, and we need to have it, and we need to have it more often. So I suggest that we um, ask our listeners their point of view. Okay. So y'all heard her. We're going to ask y'all a point of view. Do you think, what do you think about? commitment what do you think about marriage do you think it's for you do you think it's not for you why is it not for you hit us up man you know y'all can hit us up in the inboxes y'all can hit us on uh down here in the comment section like right here at the bottom go ahead and leave us a comment you know next show we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna reach out we're gonna make, give you a little bit of spotlight let you go ahead yeah but, but before we get out of here i do got one question because we got to wrap it up and we can go into the next the next show on this why do some women and some men why do we why do we settle for bullshit now what i'm what i mean by this is if you know you in a, a situation that is not good for you it's toxic you know it's it's not going nowhere why do you settle why do you stay in that same situation why do you accept the bottom and not want the most why are we doing this? Because I'm seeing a lot, a lot, a lot of this happening, and I and I'm I'm confused because I'm thinking if it's not good for me, why am I? Why would I sit there and take this abuse? Like not even like physical abuse aspect. Just it, I'm abusing myself by allowing myself to be treated in a such manner. Why do we settle? So I, I, the, the dating quick. pool is trash, Cuddy. But like, why would I? But you. But this is the thing. The dating pool is trash. But you don't have to settle with one person. See, a lot of them are settling with one person. They're not settling with like just trash around. Then why not just be by yourself? Exactly. That is that that is the question. Y'all think about this because next show we're gonna get into this and we're gonna we're gonna try to understand the psyche. And I if I can, I'm gonna try to get a couple people on here that that might be going through the situation that want to talk about why they why they feel this way i think that's what my goal is for the next show that we do is we're gonna try to get some people on here and they're gonna try to give us some insight so hey wait, but, wait, but can i ask you do you have any idea how scary it is to be by yourself because you got to take a long hard look at yourself right. when you're by yourself so that's a scary scary thing and that's why a lot of folk don't want to be you know alone solo and, and and instead of taking the opportunity to work on themselves and say hey what did i do in, in this relationship that I don't need to do in the next relationship or what didn't I do in this relationship that I need to do in the next relationship. So you have to take a long, hard look at yourself and that is not easy to do. So right. yes, we, we welcome our guests um, on the show. Yo, so, and let's get into it. Let's get into it. Yo, hey, Toy, we had a, a great show tonight. We, uh -huh. we got into some some deep, deep waters tonight. Yo, it's yo, it's the Convo with a Boss podcast, man. We are back. This is season two. You know what it is, man. Like I said, the merch will be dropping on the site in two weeks. So go ahead, get your orders together, man. Christmas is coming up. Birthdays is coming up. Thanksgiving uh, parties and Christmas parties. <laughs> hey, this the sweatshirts will be nice to wear to a Christmas party. That's all I'm saying. Is, you know, we can go ahead and get into that. Uh, any last words um, for the the people this week? You know, Cuddy, it's hard out here. You you spoke on, you know, some of the men not having a stable place to live, some of the women not having a stable place to live. It's hard out here. I'll be the first one to say it. Um, I do want to say, though, keep going, keep trying. Right before the worst, you know what I'm saying? When you're about to give up, just stay focused, get refocused, and just know that better days are coming. I just had to say it because somebody out there need to hear it. And I don't know who it is, but uh, better days are coming. So just stay focused and, and you know, keep listening. We'll keep encouraging. Okay. Um, yo, <laughs> we always talk about the positives and everything and loving on everybody. But I want everybody to understand, uh, you're not promised tomorrow. 
Nope. So you get to live in today. If it's something you want to do, do it today. Um, don't don't put it off. Don't think you, you want to do something and you're going to start something. You want to start a business, start it today. Yeah. Even if you ain't got a dollar in your pocket, start it. Uh, you never know what might come from it. Um, live your life like it's every day is the last. You can plan for the future, and that's cool. But if you steady planning for it and you never start it, you're going to miss out, and then your time is going to come, and you're going to wish you did. So, hey. Don't let nothing hold you back. Don't let nobody stand in your way. You know how we do. This is Convo with a Boss. It's your boy, B. Cuddy. And I got the beautiful toy, the ATL Vegan. Hey. Yo, yo, we will check y'all out next week, man. We salute y'all. We thank y'all for the love and support. Hey, we, until next time, we'll holler. Peace. Peace. They see me out and be like, but don't talk at all. That's really not the truth, I just don't fuck with y'all I'm only with a few and yeah, my circle's small Or either by my daddy, Ruger in my drawers Ain't trying to be no tough guy, it's just how I'm raised The softest niggas gangsta in the mid-state My grandma said